Okay, guys, I didn't think it would actually happen that early, but uh, there was just a new video released uh, on the internet on YouTube, uh, which is talking about Terminates. So I wanted to start watching it, but then I realized, yeah, why not actually straight away making it a reaction video, right? Okay, this guy is talking about uh, Warp Terminal, and I'm curious what he has to say. It's apparently someone who just switched from Windows to Mac OS, at least part-time. But Warp Terminal may or may not come to Linux anyway. So uh, yeah, let's find out. So this is the guide, this is the video. Let's jump right into the terminal so I can show you what I'm all talking about. So first you will notice that the warp terminal is all block based and that means the command line input is placed at the bottom of the terminal and is always visible. So no matter- Well, it's always on the bottom. <laughs> I, I, I'm not complaining, it's always on the bottom, but yeah, this is right, it's not always visible. That's, that's right, but you, it doesn't have to be always visible. I, I wouldn't call it a feature, it's just, you know, design but people may like it if you're scrolling up or down or searching for something you will always see your current command in every command that you execute as if you instantly forget what kind of command you're typing is written to a separate block in this terminal windows so the blocks are kind of treated like separate objects and which is actually something that i said also in my last video which i can just highly recommend it's more podcast style anyways so just listen to it this is what i meant with that warp terminal is actually pretty innovative and really needed for the modern terminal age i would say apart from them trying to monetize of course the block thing is something i would love to see more terminals to adapt and that allows you to do some very cool things with them. For example, if you typed in many commands and you got a huge history of work, you can bookmark a single block by clicking a small icon in the top right corner, and that will show you a small colored square in your scroll bar from now on, so that you can very easily track your entire work. And No, you can't track your entire work because there's a history limit. Just imagine you have a 10,000 lines terminal square break buffer, which means you can echo 10,000 things in there, right? Like 10,000 different lines. And what happens afterwards? It's evicting at the top, right? But yeah, it's just a minor detail. So you cannot track your entire thing. It's just not possible. To mark certain points of interest. You can also- Yeah, I agree. So easily copy this command, the out- So now let's look at the commands here, what they're having. Copy command, copy output, copy both. That's exactly what I meant yesterday in the other video. Um, create permalink. Yeah, that's actually one of the key features which is actually using the cloud. So you're uploading the content, so be aware of that. So that uh, you're getting a short link and uh, you can share with other people, which is generally a nice idea. I would like to be able to, you know, decide myself where to upload this stuff. But yeah, git, copy git branch. Oof, why would, mm, interesting. I simply type in commands, it's much easier than right click, you know, but yeah, split pane, left, right, makes sense. Next. Output or both, yeah, just the whole block. And oh yeah, because I just see it right now, it does of course split panes, yeah, right, left, what down and up as well. I sometimes forget to notice these basic things, but that shouldn't be missed in a good terminal, of course. Wrong. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man, wrong. No, you can still have a good German even though you don't support panes. I mean, if you consider it like this, uh, with his saying then Alacrity is a bad terminal. You know, it's at least not a good terminal because it doesn't have splits. And you don't need to. Ideally, you should not even have to because that's the job of your window manager. Your window manager's job is to provide windows to you. So if you need two terminals, just spawn two windows, as simple as that. But it's the lack of the functionality of the window managers usually to conveniently arrange all your terminal screens you would love to have. So that's why people started adding tabs, you know, and panes, yeah, split screen. It also has a pretty nice search function. So that works inside these blocks with a control P hotkey. You can open the command tab the and that nice, lets yeah. you search for a certain string. And you might also notice it can also do regular expressions inside this search field. Okay. But the search is global. It's not, we have not just seeing this. It was highlighting it in the match in two blocks, not just in one block. So you can't search within one block. You just search in history and that's a standard feature great stuff which windows terminal also has so yeah the recax thing is just you know just a minor detail uh, it's nice to have but kelly console is having it too it's nothing special N not all of them of course having it uh it's it's nice to have but it's not a woohoo factor but yeah 
But what probably stands out the most from other terminals is that the whole input handling and how you're working with this terminal feels more like a modern code editor than a simple command line input. He clearly never used DSH with auto suggestions or fish shell, and he clearly doesn't know about fig.io. It's just, you know, I'm just evaluating here. Because what you can do in warp is, um, and I haven't really seen this anywhere else, by the way, you can use yeah. the mouse to jump he around in know. your command while you are writing it. And you can also replace text inside this command block as long as you haven't executed it, of course. Uh, there's one really interesting thing. Uh, he said, like, you can click around in your uh, command line and put the cursor there. Where first, so either use vim input mode in your uh, shell, which do support it, then it's jumping is really easy, or use your cursor keys. So either use control A to jump to the beginning of your input, or control E to jump to the end of the input. And you can even key map wordwise jumps in your input RC, for example. So it's all possible, not with mouse clicks, but in the end, we're in the terminal. You do not want to use your mouse. That's why you are in the terminal. To, you know to be empowered and not use your hand and move it around to the to your mouse like far away from a keyboard but yeah i mean personal preference that's also pretty cool and you can even do it in multi-line commands so now it gets very interesting because the multi-line commands is something they, they say it's a feature and yeah you can list it as a feature because in fact it is one but it's a useless one from my point of view like why on earth would i want to write something like this like i, I can't imagine anything where I would need multi-line cursor editing and therefore warp, what I could not implement in a simple for loop, you know, but yeah. You can just move around with your cursor to any of the lines above, edit and replace text. Because they fully re-implemented the input, it's, it's not your shell what you're seeing here, it's just a uh, edit box from your GUI. And yeah, it, it looks nice. It, it does look nice. And I would like some shades to improve on this one. But multi-line editing, ah, come on. Or you can even spawn a multi-cursor below or above your current selection and work with it like in a code editor. Edit multiple lines at once. So Not no needed. preparing a complex multi-line command in a text Waste editor first and then copy and paste it back into the terminal. You don't need to do that anymore because you can just use warp terminal like a text editor. For some reason I like this guy. For me, this is so damn useful, that I mean way it. it gets even more interesting. So Warp also has an artificial intelligence command searching. So when you open this, you can just tell the AI what you want to do in your terminal, and it recommends you a command for that. Let's, uh, for example, just display all hidden files in my current folder, which generates an ls-a command. I'm not so sure, but I'm pretty sure we all know how to use Google, right? I mean, it's easy. It's nice to do it from the terminal, but then again, like there are man pages. There's, you know, like this common term called RTFM and uh, the command apropos and yeah, probably quite a few others, which I forgot because I never use them or rarely use them. What I use the most is man page and, and Google search, of course, but um, Apart from this, I don't see myself requiring something like a AI search. Uh, and in the end, it's actually not that much AI because they are manually crafting stuff in. They have been asking for some feedback there. But I don't mind. Like, if you want to have it, then go for it. Or maybe I would like to know how much memory is free on my computer. So this will give us a... Oh, really? Come on. Simple. Or H of everybody knows this. Almost everybody knows this. So I'm not addressing any newbies here, but as soon as you're like beyond the absolute bloody newbie stage, you know how to check your memory. Like even your user interface can do that. Also, yeah, exactly. So um, we can spawn, in my case, it is system monitor. Let's close you, we don't need you. And go into one of these. Yeah, memory, 128 gigs in my case. We are clearly not using enough memory, so it's a waste of time, waste of resources, sorry. But in my case, uh, I'm usually spawning up quite a few uh, virtual machines and I do not want to sacrifice the memory here. So I'm giving all my virtual machines like 32 gigs of memory and that's all amazing, you know, let's continue. The free dash M command. Uh, but wait, that didn't work, yeah, because this is a Linux command. Let's be- Oh, come on. Dash M is actually the parameter for Linux. Be a bit more precise. And Which means megabyte, by the way. 
Yeah, just call free and cut off the last two digits. And let's ask the AI how much memory is free on a Mac. You can see this is so cool, yeah? I just like the AI feature so much because I think you can learn a lot about the terminal commands. I think AI is like the AI in Warp Terminal will become what uh, PowerPoint is to the desktop user, to the average desktop user. It makes you dumb. Like you don't think about the command anymore, but it makes you not reading man pages anymore. And the problem there is then you only know what you really have to know as little as possible. It's basically what the AI is telling you and you're trusting it. Like whatever this one is responding with, right? if it is a true AI or just, you know, some pattern matching. So I don't like, you really should take the time and read some man pages. You will learn much more out of it. Yes, but that's a good thing by just playing around with the AI and see which suggestions it comes up with. But well, I know this is not for everybody. Yeah, I kind of had the same discussion with people about the new GitHub Copilot, for example. Some people like cloud-based AI suggestions, some do not. But anyway, all the cloud features... I hope I was giving a really good um, answer to that, like why this one is not so nice. Features in the warp terminal, they are opt-in features, so you can use them but you don't need to use them. There's still so much other useful stuff in this application, and I just want to show you one more thing, and that is a feature I'm currently exploring and trying to figure out what I can all do with it. Warp has also something that is called workflows, and workflows are collections uh, of yeah. prepared command statements. They work similar to code snippets, yeah, just for terminal commands. For the lazy. And Warp by default already has a lot of predefined workloads that you can search for. For example, in the open SSL section, there are command snippets for converting SSL certificates, or in Kubernetes, there are snippets for more complex kubectl commands, mainly to do maintenance. It's like a curated list of uh, Google search results or of um, Stack Overflow results tasks like rollback deployments or sort pods by ages. You can find these command snippets useful or not, but what caught my interest about this feature was that you can also write custom workflows as well. For example, I have created a workflow that will generate a new self. It just makes you more dumb, I can't believe it. I mean, I do get the point for people being probably a little bit too newbish, but even then you should really read the manual. And yes, it will take more time for you to boot up on a, sub uh, on, on a subject, but at least you understand what you're executing. Signed certificate for me. So this workflow consists of four different commands where I have different. defined some default values so I can replace it all in one single step. For example, the name of the certificate or the subject alternative name, how long this certificate should be valid and so on. And when I execute this workflow, it will just generate a new self-signed certificate. How cool is that? So that is actually- Only as quiz, you don't want to learn. And I mean, not you in person, but generally, gen generally speaking. Actually making my life a lot easier. And I believe you can speed up all your workflow in the terminal with this automation feature. Absolutely not. Absolutely. I 100% not. I mean, first you need to search, you know, you need to look it up. You're just believing what is there. You, you fill it out, you know, and then you hit enter and be done with it. And if you need this command again, because in the end you will most likely do it for many of them, you have to search again, like as opposed to you just know what you can do, you know, you, you learn the subject and you execute it, you know, you just type in the commands like decently fast that you are not too slow in typing text. Um, I truly believe you are definitely faster in knowing what to type rather than depending on some AI, because in the end, you don't even know if it's in there and who says the first match in the AI search results is what you're looking for. So nothing can beat your brain there. If you like to create your own workflows and play around with it. Wait a sec. Let's score back 15 seconds. Zoom in. One of the nice features of KDE. I'm, I need to, you know, I need to say thanks to KDE. So first, he's a Visual Studio user. We can see that here, like in this icon. And next to it, we also see uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is actually nice. We also see... Um, OBS, which is also nice. Uh, Discord, amazing. Plus some other stuff. It's, it's all blurry. We don't see that much. But VS Code, I mean, clearly he likes this feature. <laughs> feature. Nothing personal. If you like to create your own workflows and play around with it, 
they are just simple YAML files that you can store in your dot files and synchronize via Git. For instance, I have added some of them to my dot files repository on GitHub. You will, by the way, find a link to my GitHub profile in the description of this video. But I guess I should make a second video about that and go over workflows in a bit more detail because I know this is uh, a bit too fast. Maybe when I used it for a couple of weeks and collected a bunch of useful workflow snippets. And please, if you useful? have any ideas for what this could be useful, Apparently he doesn't. <laughs> Perhaps you already have something in mind. Yeah, join my Discord and send it to me if you like, and I'll include the best workflows that I have found in the next video of. I have a good workflow: how to uninstall warp terminal. No offense. No offense. Just kidding. Warp terminal. And yeah, because we're just speaking about socializing and all this stuff. Yeah, if you enjoy my videos and you haven't already done it. Yeah, uh, you know, same for me. But yeah, nevertheless, uh, dude, he's not done yet. It. Give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool because it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. I could also use it on Linux systems as well. If for whatever reason I would want to switch to Linux at some day, that probably never happens. But interesting. Why? Why? Why would you never switch to Linux? Are these features appealing to you? I would really like to know. I'm so tired of hearing this. Like literally every video is telling you that. Please like, subscribe, comment, and please comment all the stuff that you think might be helpful or what you, you know, how you feel like it's heating up the algorithm. So yeah, so that's been my first reaction on a terminal video. And uh, yeah, it was quite a fun one because I really didn't watch it ahead of time. And he's having some really interesting thoughts. It will not make me switch, but yeah, interesting. Yeah, so many thanks for watching. Uh, you made it this far. Uh, many, many thanks. And see you next time.